Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to run a one-way analysis of variance and generate two keys post hoc tests using SPSS. Before we get started let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to a PowerPoint. That PowerPoint is actually the primary presentation materials and this video is mainly going to be focusing in on the procedural aspects of running the analysis. So I would encourage you to download the PowerPoint uh, because it provides a deeper dive in terms of what the ANOVA is as well as the Tukey's post hoc test. It also goes into more detail concerning assumptions related to the analysis of variance and in addition uh, how to generate robust test results. And in that PowerPoint you will also find links to the SPSS data files that I'm using in this presentation. So in the PowerPoint, I actually provide several examples. The first one is what we're going to be focusing in on. Uh, basically, I run the analysis of variance through two routes in SPSS. The first route involves going through the compare means one-way ANOVA menus. And the second involves going through the general linear model univariate menus. So for the first example, um, in this case, we have fictional data from a set of ninth grade students who were randomly assigned to one of three treatment conditions or groups. Uh, this was, these were designed to increase their motivation to learn. So we're going to be performing a one-way ANOVA to test for omnibus group differences on the motivation measure. And then we're going to use Tukey's post hoc test to explore for possible group differences, assuming that the omnibus test is significant. So the independent variable treatment is the grouping variable and it is coded one for control group, two for treatment A, and three for treatment B and our dependent variable is measured on a continuous scale with higher scores representing greater motivation to learn and we're going to carry out our significance test with alphas set at 0 0.05. So here I have the data opened up in SPSS so there's our treatment variable this is our motivation variable. So going through the first route what we're going to do is go to analyze go to compare means and then go down to one-way ANOVA we're going to move the treatment variable to the factor box and motivation variable to the dependent list. We're going to click on options and select descriptive and homogeneity of variance tests. Now if we wanted to include robust tests in our uh, results and in, in our output, we could select Brown, Forsyth, and Welch, but we're not going to do that for this particular demonstration. Just know that that, uh, that is discussed later on in the PowerPoint in another example. So next we'll click on continue and then we will, we will click on post hoc and we will select two key right here. And as, uh, as I just noted in the PowerPoint I do uh, talk about robust tests and um, if, if it's the case where we have evidence where, where we have unequal variances then we might select Tamani's T-square uh, or Games Howell uh, as post hoc tests. But again, we're just going to stick with two key to remain consistent with our first example. So we'll click through that and then on OK and we get our output. Um, one other thing too, let me just kind of note that we can also generate a profile plot. So I'm going to go back through this and go back under options right here and I'm going to select means plot and we'll click on continue and then OK just to generate that as well. So now looking at our output, you can see that the mean uh, motivation level for the control group is 18.68 for the treatment A group is 22.69 thereabouts and for treatment B it's 25.14 so you can see that the mean is lowest in the control group and highest in treatment B. The next set of output you can see we have tests of homogeneity of variances so one of the assumptions of the analysis of variance is that the variances for our groups are equal or at least reasonably equal and so if there's unequal variances then that can pr produce an increased likelihood of committing a type 1 or type 2 error depending on the nature of the violation with respect to our analysis of variance. So we're looking at the test of homogeneity of variances as one way in which we can evaluate that assumption. There are other ways uh, through uh, the use of uh, graphical approaches. But the traditional approach uh, is Levine's test and the traditional Levine's test is this one right here. It's based on the mean 
and these other tests were not included in previous versions of SPSS, but these versions are more robust to non-normality. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to focus in on the first of these tests. So this p-value right here is utilized in order to determine if we have statistical significance, where significance would indicate a significant uh, uh, differences across groups in terms of their variances. So if this p-value right here is less than say 0 0.05, the conventional alpha level, then that, then we would be rejecting the null and inferring that there are differences in the variances across the groups, which is actually a bad thing when it comes to the assumptions related to the ANOVA test. In this case, our p-value is actually greater than 0 0.05, so we would maintain that null and this would give us greater confidence that we have met the assumption and, um, and then we can feel more confident with respect to our interpretation of the analysis of variance results. So down below we have the ANOVA summary table here. We've got our FA that's given and then a p-value. Um, and so if we compare this p-value against alpha, you can see that this value is less than 0 0.05. So we would reject the null and infer that the population means are not equal. Now, let me just kind of note too that the 0 0.000 is just due to the rounding in the program. But if I highlight this right here, you can see this is a more exact value. So as you can see, it's just a very, it's a value that's very close to zero, but not exactly zero. Usually researchers will just report this as uh, P less than 0 0.001. So next, given that our ANOVA is statistically significant, we'll look at the uh, post hoc test results. You can see that we have our table with Tukey's uh, HSD results. So you'll see in the table we've got control, treatment A, and treatment B. So this first set of rows right here, these are comparisons between the control group and each of the, the uh, A and B groups. So this mean difference column right here uh, is just basically taking the mean for uh, uh, this first group, group I, and subtracting the mean for group J for a given um, comparison. So you can see that this negative value right here, the negative 4, is indicating that the mean for the control group is less than or lower than the mean for the treatment A group. You can also see that we have an asterisk in this which is indicating uh, statistical significance at the 0 0.05 level. Um, if we want a p-value and report on, if, if we want to report on the p-value, you can see it's 0 0.003. Then we have a comparison between the control group and treatment B. So we you can see we have a negative value, it's, but it's statistically significant. So again, uh, the control group mean is lower than or less than uh, the mean for treatment B. It, the difference is statistically significant. There's our p-value. So we would report that as p less than 0 0.001. Then you can see we have treatment A versus control. Now this right here is actually just a repeat of this test up here. So there's no need to actually uh, try to interpret these results because we've already done that particular test. So then we can uh, compare treatment A versus treatment B. And you can see we have a negative um, mean difference right here indicating that the mean for treatment A is lower than the mean for treatment B. Now is that difference significant? You can see that there's no asterisk in that cell right here um, and there's our p-value it's 0 .087 so that's indicating that there's no difference between the two groups. The last part of the box right here we have treatment B versus control and treatment B versus treatment A and these tests basically repeat what we've already done above. So next, let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit further. You can see we have our means plot. Um, so you can see right here we have the mean for the control group that's given, the mean for treatment A, and the mean for treatment B. So sometimes it's just helpful to visualize um, the means uh, in our analysis. So that, that's the means plot. So now let's go ahead and rerun our analysis through Route 2. So we'll go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and then go to Univariate. We'll move the Treatment Variable down to the Fixed Factors box and Motivation over to the Dependent Variable box. Under Options, we'll ask for Descriptive Statistics, Effect Size, and Power. And we'll go ahead and ask for Homogeneity Test right here. We'll click on Continue. Uh, under EM means, this is estimated marginal means, we'll move these over uh, to the display means box right there and click on continue. Where it says post hoc, we'll move our treatment variable over to the post hoc test box and click on Tukey. 
and then continue and then under plots we can ask for um, basically a bar chart if we want or a line chart uh, in this case we're going to move uh, treatment over to the horizontal axis click on add and then I'm going to select bar chart in this example and we'll go ahead and include error bars with the 95 percent confidence interval around our mean so we'll click on continue and then on OK and take a look at our output so in this case right here you can see we have our descriptive statistics with the means and standard deviations. Once again, we have our Levine's test results that are given right here. These are not different from what we've seen above. Now, the test of between subjects effects, this, this contains our ANOVA results. And the results are exactly the same, but it looks a little bit different from what we had before. So you'll see right here we have the name of our independent variable, which is treatment. Um, you can see that we have our F value that's given right there, and this is the P value. So these were exactly the same values that appeared uh, previously when we ran our analysis through the previous route. Right here, we have uh, partial eta squared, which in the context of a one-way ANOVA is the eta squared value. And we can interpret this as the proportion of variance in the dependent variable. This is accounted for by the independent variable. So we could say that treatment accounted for about 56.1% of the variation in the motivation variable. And um, Cohen, back in 88, suggested uh, uh, various conventions for judging the size of the effect using eta squared so he suggested a value at 0 0.01 would suggest a small effect a value around 0 0.06 would indicate a medium effect and then a value around 0.14 would indicate a large effect so you can see right here that we have evidence of a large effect using Cohen's um, conventions next we'll scroll down you can see that we have our estimated marginal means these are just basically our sample means uh, with confidence intervals around those means. We'll scroll down a little bit further. You can see that we have our multiple comparisons table with the Tukey's uh, post hoc test. So these results are all the same as what we had before. And then you can see with the profile plot, now we have our bar chart with, um, with our confidence intervals around the sample means. Okay, so that uh, pretty well wraps up the example one that I discussed in the PowerPoint. Uh, again, I encourage you to download it because it goes, it provides several examples uh, using one-way ANOVA uh, via routes one and two and SPSS. And again, I also discussed the robust tests and assumptions. So that concludes this video demonstration and thank you for watching.